If you're experiencing vague symptoms like forgetfulness, feeling tired and weak, or even numbness and tingling in your hands or feet, these could all be signs of a vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, this is a very treatable condition that happens if you're not consuming enough vitamin B12 in your diet or if your body isn't absorbing it properly. It can affect anyone at any age, but typically people aged over 60 are most affected. In this video, we're going to cover what vitamin B12 is, symptoms, causes, diagnosis and tests, as well as management, treatment and prevention, as well as outlook for this common condition. So first of all, what is vitamin B12? Well, vitamin B12 is an important nutrient that helps your body keep your nerve cells and your blood cells healthy. It also helps your body make DNA, which is the genetic material that's in all of your cells. Now, because your body doesn't make vitamin B12 on its own, you need to consume food and drinks that have vitamin B12 in it in order to get it. So things like meat, dairy, and eggs. It can also be found in what we call fortified foods, which are foods that have got certain vitamins and nutrients that have been added to them, things like certain cereals and breads, but you need to look on the back of the pack to make sure it's been fortified. Now, generally speaking, the average adult needs around 2.4 micrograms of vitamin B12 a day, but if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, then you will need more. For children and babies, B12 requirements are going to vary depending on their age and weight. So now we know what it is, well, how does your body absorb vitamin B12? Well, two things need to happen for your body to absorb enough vitamin B12 from the food you eat. The acid that's in your stomach, which is called hydrochloric acid, removes or strips vitamin B12 from the food it was in. The vitamin B12 then combines with something that is called intrinsic factor, which is a protein that is made by your stomach, which means it then can be absorbed by your digestive system. So why is all of this important? Well, vitamin B12 is needed to make red blood cells. If you're deficient in B12, then sometimes your body can't make enough healthy red blood cells. And this can cause a condition that is called anemia essentially a shortage of healthy red blood cells and these are really important for carrying oxygen around the body without these you might develop symptoms like feeling breathless tired or even having headaches but just because you've got a vitamin b12 deficiency doesn't necessarily mean that you'll definitely develop anemia so what causes vitamin b12 deficiency well vitamin b12 deficiency happens if you aren't eating enough vitamin b12 or your body isn't absorbing the B12 that you're consuming properly. Now, one of the most common causes of vitamin B12 deficiency is from people who don't eat enough foods that naturally have vitamin B12 in them, or they don't eat foods that are fortified with vitamin B12. Another reason for not getting enough vitamin B12 is that your body isn't absorbing enough of it. Causes for this could include gastritis, which is inflammation of the stomach lining, and it's a common cause of B12 deficiency. It can cause this due to a lack of hydrochloric acid in your stomach, which is needed for the absorption. People who've got something called pernicious anemia, which is a rare medical condition, can't make enough intrinsic factor, which is the protein that is made by your stomach, to help absorb B12. Diseases that affect the digestive system like Crohn's disease and celiac disease can also prevent your body from fully absorbing B12. Similarly, people who've had gastrointestinal surgery like gastric bypass, which is a type of weight loss surgery, can also have difficulty in absorbing enough vitamin B12. Similarly, alcohol use disorder can damage your digestive system and cause the deficiency. And finally, a rare condition that's called transcobalamin 2 deficiency, which is a rare genetic disorder, impairs the transport of vitamin B12 within the body. So now let's move on and just discuss some of the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. Well, it can cause a range of different things, including physical, neurological, and even psychological symptoms. Now, the symptoms of the vitamin B12 deficiency can develop slowly, and they can get worse over time. Some people may not actually have any symptoms, despite having low levels of B12 in their bodies. Now, people with vitamin B12 deficiency can have neurological symptoms, and or damage without anemia, which, as I mentioned, was the lack of red blood cells. Now, general physical symptoms can include feeling very tired or weak, experiencing nausea, vomiting or diarrhea, not feeling as hungry as usual, and even having weight loss, a sore mouth or tongue, or developing yellowish-looking skin. Neurological symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency, which are those affecting the brain, 
can include numbness or tingling in your hands and feet, vision problems, having a hard time remembering things or getting confused easily, or having a difficult time walking or speaking like you usually do. Psychological symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency can include feeling depressed, feeling irritable, experiencing a change in the way you feel or behave. So as you can see, it's a huge range of potential symptoms that could display if you have a B12 deficiency. Now, in terms of how it's diagnosed, well, the easiest way to test for a B12 deficiency is to do a set of blood tests, including a full blood count, also called a complete blood count, and a vitamin B12 blood test. If the amount of B12 in the blood is less than 150 per mil, then this is classed as a deficiency and it needs treatment. So how is vitamin B12 deficiency actually treated? Well, it can be treated with B12 and it's often treated with cyanocobalamin, a human-made form of vitamin B12. Now, depending on the cause of the deficiency, you may only need treatment until your levels are back to normal, or you might need B12 therapy for the rest of your life. Your healthcare provider will help advise you on this. Now, options for B12 treatment include oral medications, injections that can go into the muscle if the levels are very low, and even nasal gels or sprays. Now, finally, let's discuss prevention of B12 deficiency. Well, the good news is that most people can prevent vitamin B12 deficiency by consuming foods and drinks that have got vitamin B12 in them. So things like red meat, fish, poultry, eggs, milk, and other dairy products all contain vitamin B12. Other options are fortified foods, which are the foods that have got certain vitamins and nutrients added to them. So certain breakfast cereals, nutritional yeast, plant milk, and certain bread can have B12 added. And to be sure, check the food label to see if the food has been fortified with vitamin B12. The other option is to take a multivitamin or supplement, and you can speak to your pharmacist or health provider about whether this is a good option for you. But my advice is that if you have a good, balanced, healthy diet, this is obviously preferable to taking supplements. Other things that can help prevent vitamin B12 deficiency are things like minimizing alcohol because frequent alcohol consumption can damage your digestive system and make it difficult for your body to absorb B12. Similarly, if you've got digestive diseases such as Crohn's disease or celiac disease, make sure that you follow your healthcare provider's instructions to stay healthy. Now, people who are more at risk of becoming B12 deficient are people who are older than 75, having the digestive system disorders like celiac disease or Crohn's disease, or if you follow a strict vegan or vegetarian diet. And that's because B12 is only naturally found in animal products like meat and dairy. Because of this, people who eat a vegan or vegetarian diet are more likely to have a B12 deficiency if they're not eating enough fortified foods or taking supplements that have B12 in them. Other things that put you more at risk, including taking certain medications, including metformin, which is a drug used to manage diabetes, proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole or lansoprazole, as well as histamine H2 blockers, which are medications used to reduce the amount of acid that your stomach makes, as well as oral birth control pills, or you might know these as oral contraceptives. Now, interestingly, people with Sjögren syndrome are over six times more likely to have vitamin B12 deficiency. Similarly, drinking excessive amounts of alcohol can damage your digestive system, like I mentioned, and this can cause B12 deficiency as well. Finally, what is the outlook or prognosis for a B12 deficiency? Well, really, it depends on how early the deficiency is diagnosed and treated. If it's caught early, most symptoms will improve with treatment pretty rapidly. Depending on the cause of your B12 deficiency, you may only need to take medication for a short amount of time, or you might need to take medication for the rest of your life. Now, if the B12 deficiency is left untreated, on the other hand, it can cause lasting side effects that can affect the nervous system and the brain. Now, more severe side effects of vitamin B12 deficiency can include something called peripheral neuropathy, which is damage to the nerves in places like your hands and feet, which can cause tingling and numbness, as well as loss of sensation. In rare but very severe cases, it can even cause degeneration of the spinal cord, which can lead to bowel incontinence or even urinary incontinence and erectile dysfunction. In other people, it can cause issues like depression, paranoia, delusions, and even memory loss. Now, I work in a dementia assessment clinic, and because B12 deficiency can cause memory loss, we do ask GPs to ensure that they've done an up-to-date B12 level on patients before referring them 
for a dementia assessment. So if you are struggling with your memory, make sure that you do get this checked first. If you do experience symptoms of B12 deficiency, which as I mentioned, can be pretty wide ranging, or you're at risk for developing B12 deficiency, please do contact your health provider to see if you should take a blood test to measure your B12 level. And for more useful resources, please do check out the description box below.